welcome to ds ej home classes an attempt to connect learner with the instructor a digital initiative by directorate of school education namaskar my dear students today we are going to start with the 11th chapter of your book of ncrt and the name of the chapter is the transport in the plants so my dear students have you ever wondered how water reaches the top of the tall trees or for that matter how and why the substances move from one cell to the other whether all the substances move in the similar way in the same direction or whether some metabolic energy is needed for moving substances plants need to move molecules over a long distances even much more than the animals do they also have to reach to all parts of the plant up to every tip of the growing plant the photosynthetic synthetic uh, materials are the products of the photosynthesis are made in the leaves and have to be moved to all parts including the root tips embedded deep inside the soil the movement across the short distances say within the cell across the membranes and from cell to cell within the tissue has also to take place so in this chapter we will understand some aspects as to how does the water move inside the water as well as the other substances they move inside the uh, plants so when we talk about the movement of the substances we need to first to define what kind of movement we are talking about and also what substances we are looking at in the flowering plants when we talk about the transport of the materials in fact the substances that would need to be transported are the water minerals and the organic uh, solutes or the organic nutrients and in addition to this are the plant growth regulators which move in a very small quantity over small distances some substances move by diffusion or by cytoplasmic streaming supplemented by the active transport whereas the transport over the long distances is called as the translocation here one thing more is to be mentioned that the transport of the water and the mineral is unidirectional whereas the transport of the organic solutes is bidirectional you can understand this by the concept by this diagram that the water moves from the roots and is taken in all parts of the plant which moves in a unidirection whereas the food which is manufactured within the leaves the glucose made by the photosynthesis has to be transported in both the directions towards the, on the upper side towards the growing tips as well as towards the last tip of the root so the movement of the organic solutes is generally bidirectional whereas the movement of water and minerals is the unidirectional now after this we must talk about that the transport in the plants it takes place by two methods that is there are the two methods the uptake and the loss of the water and the solutes by the individual cells now this takes place for example when any plant part undergoes uh, the uh, shows the movement of the minerals the mineral nutrients are taken up by the roots and transported upwards into the stem leaves and the growing regions are we must talk about the senescence here also when any part undergoes senescence the nutrients may be withdrawn senescence means the dying out of a particular part of the plant and from those regions the nutrients are moved to the growing parts however the plant growth regulators and other chemical stimuli are also transported through a very small amounts in particular specific directions sometimes in a strictly polarized or unidirectional manner from where they are synthesized to other parts 
however in flowering plants there is a complex traffic of the compounds uh, but probably very orderly moving in all directions each organ receiving some substance and giving out some other so we have broadly classified all the movements of the various substances in the plants into short distance transport and the long distance transport short distance transport of the substances from the cell to cell at the level of the tissues in the organs long distance transport of the sap within the xylem and phloem at the level of the whole plant we shall be discussing the various methods of transport which involves various physical phenomena such as diffusion imbibition absorption adsorption etc and some biological methods which involve uh, the involvement of the energy is there and they are categorized as the active transport we shall be discussing these one by one so let us start with the first and that is the diffusion so first we will talk about diffusion the diffusion is the method of the short distance transport of the various substances and here we will discuss it under three headings diffusion facilitated diffusion and active transport out of which the facilitated diffusion and the diffusion are the passive transport whereas the active transport it involves the energy here are the differences between the active and the passive transport we shall be discussing these types one by one in the active transport energy is utilized whereas in passive transport no energy is utilized in active transport the movement of ions takes place against the concentration gradient whereas in passive transport the movement of ions takes place favoring the concentration gradient in active transport specific carriers are required whereas no carriers are required in passive transport cellular respiratory rate is changed in case of it is higher in case of active transport because respiration leads to the liberation of energy whereas no change in the respiratory rate occurs in the passive transport enzymes are involved in active transport whereas no enzymes are involved in active uh, passive transport now let us start with the diffusion now diffusion movement by the diffusion is passive and may be from one part of the cell to the other cell or from cell to cell or over the short distances say from the intercellular spaces of the leaf to the outside no energy expenditure because it is a passive process in diffusion the molecules move in a random fashion the net result being the substance moving from the region of higher concentration to the lower concentration as diffusion is defined as the movement of the particles from the area of high concentration to the area of low concentration down the concentration gradient now let me explain you that if we want to understand the term diffusion we must understand what is we mean by the term solution solution is the mixture of more than one substances two or more now since the water moves from the roots and it's never pure water because several ions are involved several nutrients minerals or substances are dissolved in it so we can very well call the this solution rather than mere water now the solution consists of two parts the solute and the solvent solute is the part which is present in the smaller quantity and the solvent is the part which is present in the larger quantity for understanding it in a perfect way you can see a room filled with the air and small droplets of perfume perfume is the solute and air is the solvent now in the same way the diffusion is obvious in gases and liquids but diffusion in solids 
rather than of solids is more likely uh, the diffusion of uh, occurs the of the solid in the liquid of the liquid in the air of the gas in the gas anyway in any medium the diffusion can take place now the diffusion is defined as the movement of the particles from the area of higher concentration of solute to the area of lower concentration of the solute till the mixture becomes homogenized or the concentration becomes equal in the whole of the medium as you can see in this figure the red dots represent the solute which are being dispersed in the solvent represented by the blue dots and it continues till the mixture becomes homogeneous that is equally distributed throughout the medium now let us talk about some factors because we are talking about the living organisms the plants and several factors are responsible which causes the rate of the diffusion to become faster or the slower first is the size of the particle at a given temperature means when the temperature remains constant the smaller molecules move or diffuse faster than the larger ones that is smaller the size faster the diffusion then is the temperature as the temperature increases particles gain energy and move faster thus the rate of the diffusion is increased in other words we can say the diffusion is directly proportional to the temperature more the temperature faster the diffusion then next one is the concentration difference greater the concentration of the difference between the two regions faster the substance will diffuse let me explain uh, this point once again if the concentration of the solute is more then it will diffuse in the solvent in a faster way that is if we place a pinch of ink on one side of the uh, glass of water it will diffuse faster in water but if the same ink is placed in the egg uh, white it will diffuse slower because egg white is little thicker and the concentration difference will be little lesser on the other hand in water it will diffuse because the concentration difference is greater in the two then is the diffusion distance what it means at a given temperature that is when the temperature is constant it takes longer for the particle to diffuse a farther distance thus the slower the rate of diffusion that is if the cell is larger in size or the area in which the diffusion has to take place is larger in size then distance definitely matters and the diffusion will be inversely proportional to the distance under consideration next is the surface area greater the surface area greater is the rate of diffusion it means that when the diffusing particle is present in a narrow bottled uh, na narrow uh, area the diffusion is rather little slower but if it is present in the broad area with a great surface area then the diffusion is faster permeability this is very important as already talked to you that there are three types of membrane membranes impermeable which do not allow anything to pass through them they are and then is the uh, permeable membrane which allows everything to pass through them and then the third one are the semi permeable membrane which of which we are talking about because the living cells they represent the semi permeable membrane which allow selective um ions or the particles to pass through them according to the size of the particles which they are allowing more the permeable the separating surface is faster is the substance that can diffuse through it that is permeability is directly proportional to the diffusion more the permeability more is the rate of the diffusion 
now why we are talking about diffusion how it is important to the plants it is very important means of short distance transport in the plants because it helps in the absorption and distribution of water in the plants moreover exchange of gases oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place due to diffusion oxygen is released during the photosynthesis absorbed during the respiration and carbon dioxide is absorbed during the photosynthesis released during the respiration and this all exchanges of gases takes place by the phenomena of diffusion it helps in transpiration of the water vapors when the water transpires to the stomatal surface it is transpired to the outer surface by the phenomena of diffusion it is very effective method of transport for the short distance movement as i already told you now this is the diffusion but there is another uh, point which needs to be understood here and this is the these terms the uniport symport antiport and the aquaporins these four terms we must understand let us first talk about these uniport some carriers because the transport takes place via uh, some membranes and membranes they allow the permeability now carriers are the transport proteins which allow diffusion if two particles of the molecules they are moving together in symport in this symport type of the molecules both the molecules across the membranes they move in the same direction the x and the y are the two uh, molecules which are moving in the same direction such a condition transport is called as the symport uh in the antiport they move in the opposite direction as you can see here the x is moving towards this side y is moving towards the outside now when they move towards the outside this condition is called as the antiport on the other hand when the molecules move across the membrane independent of the other molecule that is only one molecule is under consideration such a movement is called as the uniport movement of the particles or the molecules that is no molecule is dependent on the other all are moving independently now let us talk about this channels are the aquaporins before we understand the facilitated diffusion and the active transport the proteins form the channels in the membrane for the molecules to pass through some channels are always open others can be controlled that is they can be opened and closed some are large allowing a variety of molecules to cross cross now aquaporins are the proteins that form huge pores in the outer membrane of the plastids mitochondria and some bacteria allowing molecules up to the size of small proteins to pass through them such areas large areas they are called as the aquaporins now these are the some methods or the uh, you can say the apparatus available for us to facilitate the diffusion process and first is the let us talk about the active transport now what is this active transport active transport uses energy to pump molecules against a concentration gradient active transport is carried out by membrane proteins hence the different proteins to the in the membrane play a major role in both active as well as passive transport pumps are the proteins that use energy to carry substances from the cell membrane these pumps can transport substances from a low concentration to higher concentration that is uphill transport this can carry uphill transport that is from the lower concentration they are being carried to the higher concentration transport rate reaches the maximum when all the protein transporters are being used or are saturated like enzymes 
the carrier protein is very specific in what it carries across the membrane these proteins are sensitive to inhibitors but react with the protein side chains and they these are because they are carrying the molecules across the concentration gradient so in fact they are uh, utilizing the energy and energy of the cell is the atp which is the atp adenosine triphosphate is the energy currency of the cell and they use this type of the energy for this transport now let me talk about the these uniports imports antipodes and the acoporins once again to explain the process of facilitated diffusion as pointed out earlier a gradient must already be present for the diffusion to occur diffusion rate depends on the size of the substance obviously smaller substances diffuse faster as we just talk about the size is directly proportional uh, the smaller the size faster is the diffusion the it is inversely proportional the diffusion of any substance across a membrane also depends upon the solubility of the lipids the major constituents of the molecules substance soluble in the lipids diffuse through the membrane substances have high hydrophilic moiety hydrophilic means water loving that is find it difficult to pass through the membrane they are then these movements has to be facilitated membrane proteins provide a site at which such protein molecules cross the membrane they do not set up a concentration gradient a concentration gradient must already be present for the molecules to diffuse through these uh, pores and this is called as the facilitated diffusion which occurs with the help of the these protein channels uh, which could be uniport antiport uh, symport or via the aquaporins now after facilitated diffusion and the active transport we must talk about a very important concept of the plants and that is soil plant atmosphere continuum that is the spac because whether the plants involve a physical phenomena or a biological phenomena they always uh, causes the transport between the soil in which they are anchored and atmosphere through which they are taking the ingredients and this continuity is maintained and is represented by these four letters s p a c that is soil plant atmosphere continuum uh, continuum that is it is continued uh, let me explain it once again the plants and the trees they grow on the soil from the soil they take up water whether the run off water ground water irrigated water or by whatever means the water enters the plants and lives inside the plant or get cycled in the plants till the life of the plant and from where it gets evapotranspiration that is transpiration plus evaporation takes place and moreover the evaporated water causes the rain and it comes back to the soil in this way is cyclic manner it repeats and this is called as the soil plant atmosphere continuum we will talk about a very important concept that is needed to be understood when we talk about the transport in the plants and that is the water potential to comprehend the plant water relationship an understanding of certain standard terms is necessary and the water potential is the standard term the water potential is the standard term water potential represented by psi you can see this sign it is represented by psi the water potential is a concept fundamental to the understanding of the water movements do two other terms that we will be talking about is the solute potential and the put pressure potential that determine actually the water potential water potential is a physical property of the water that determines the direction that plant water will flow 
water molecule possesses kinetic energy in liquid and gaseous form they are in random motion that is both rapid and constant the greater the concentration of the water in the system the greater is its kinetic energy or the water potential hence it is obvious that the pure water will have the greatest water potential if the two systems containing water are in contact random movement of the water molecule will result in the net movement of the water movement uh, water molecules from a system with a higher energy to the one system with the lower energy that is the water will always move from a place of higher energy to a place of lower energy and water potential of the pure water is zero the water this process of movement of the substances down the gradient of the free energy is called as the diffusion water potential is denoted by greek symbol psi and is expressed in the pressure units pascals pas it is water potential is expressed in the unit pascals by convention water potential of pure water at standard temperature which is not under any sort of pressure is taken as zero if some solute is dissolved in pure water solution has fewer free water and the concentration of the water consequently decreases reducing the water potential this what it means it means that all solution have a lower water potential than the pure water and if the water potential of the pure water is zero then the water potential of solutions must be negative that is the magnitude of this lowering due to dissolution of the solute is called as the solute potential represented by psi s this is solute potential that is potential which is lowered as a result of adding of the solute it is always negative more the solute particle lower is the solute potential for a solution at atmospheric pressure water potential is equal to the solute potential what i mean to say by this that is when no pressure is there that is an ideal condition then uh, solute potential is equal to the water potential if a pressure greater than the atmospheric pressure is applied to the pure water or a solution its water potential increases it is equivalent to the pumping water from one place to another place you can think of any system in our body where the pressure is built up can you think pressure can build up in the plant system where the water enters a plant cell due to diffusion causing a pressure built up when the cell becomes turgid this pressure is called as the pressure potential so the water potential of the cell is affected by both the solute present in it moreover the pressure exerted by the cell membrane or the cell wall this is and the sum total of whatever the solute causes whatever the pressure causes becomes the water potential so water potential with a term that you must always remember that usually the normally the pure water has a zero water potential this which is the highest form of the water potential if we add the solute in it it becomes negative so this is the water potential and the how does it moves accordingly we can mathematically control that uh, or uh, we can mathematically calculate how much is the water potential by calculating how much solute has been added and what is the surface area of the cell membrane which can exert how much pressure on the particular quantity of the solute added and the sum total is the water potential which is always a negative value in the living systems we will stop here today and i will be taking up the this con uh, again this chapter where i will be in the next lecture i will be discussing the remaining concepts the plasmolysis osmosis imbibition and the long 
distance transport in which we will be discussing various theories and the translocation transpiration and till then you can read this concept from your book of ncrt so that you better understand it and for a better understanding of the next lecture till then it's all my dear student stay blessed and thank you and have a nice day